Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Saturday, March 30th, 2024. If you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. And if you're looking for my best bets, including my rundown best bet in the MLB, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. There's also a link in the description. Alrighty, here we go. We got a full slate of MLB action, all 30 teams in play. Here are the games. First up, we see the Milwaukee Brewers taking on the New York Mets. We're going to see D.L. Hall, the lefty, and Luis Severino on the mound in this one. You know, the Brewers acquired Hall in that Corbin Burns trade with the Baltimore Orioles. He was a solid prospect with Baltimore for a few years. Has some, you know, small uh, minor, uh, major league experience. He has 33 innings of work with, a, you know, decent numbers, a good strikeout stuff especially. And, you know, in spring training, he was decent. You know, the 12 and a third innings, he didn't have a ton of work, but 4.380 ERA, not too bad. You know, six earned runs, but it was no home runs given up, so that's a good sign. He had some control issues, but his last game of spring was probably his best. He went five innings of two-run ball, no walks, no homers, and uh, four strikeouts to go with it. He's facing a Mets team that is you know, notoriously not hit lefties very well the last couple of years, and I think he pitches pretty well in this ball game. I think Luis Severino also pitches well in this game as he was a starting pitcher that really struggled for a majority of the season last year with the Yankees. But we saw the light at the end of the tunnel for Severino towards the end of the regular season. He pitched well in spring, and I think he pitches well against a pretty weak Brewers lineup on paper. I'm going to go with the under here in Brewers-Mets. Next up, we see the Detroit Tigers taking on the Chicago White Sox. Kenta Maeda and Mike Soroka are your projected starters. I think if there was a game that the White Sox had, you know, the best chance of winning in this series, this would be the one. And uh, I'm still not, you know, in love with their bullpen on paper, so that's why I'm just going to go with the White Sox in the first five innings. But you can take them in the full game as well if you'd like. As you know, Mike Soroka was really sharp in spring training, 13 innings of work with 17 strikeouts, a 1.38 ERA, only one home run given up. He was really sharp in spring, and especially his last two games against the Angels and Reds. He went eight innings combined with 10 strikeouts and only and no earned runs, just one unearned run. So, you know, Soroka entering the season, there's a reason why he's number two in this rotation. Meanwhile, it's complete opposite for Kenta Maeda, who was a big, you know, pickup for the Tigers in the offseason, but he really struggled towards the end of spring, especially where he went combined eight innings against the Orioles and Blue Jays, giving him 13 base hits. Nine earned runs, two home runs, two walks, a hit by pitch as well. The strikeout stuff's always going to be there for Maeda. He had 24 strikeouts in 17 innings of work, but I really worry about those. A lot of base runners, the home runs, the walks. Uh, I think the control is a concern, so I, I just can't back him in this game. I think there's value with the White Sox in this one. So I'm going to take Chicago in the first five innings. Next up, we see the Los Angeles Angels taking on the Baltimore Orioles. We're going to see Grayson Rodriguez and Griffin Canning as the projected starters. I think Grayson Rodriguez could be a potential dark horse as an American League Cy Young candidate. As here's somebody that in spring training didn't miss a ton of bats, but we know he's got great strikeout stuff. In, in his early career at the Major League level, he's had some control issues here and there. Gives him some sharp contact. But yeah, I like the fact that in March, in spring, 12 and two-thirds innings, only the one home run given up. That's really going to be key for him this season. Limit the long ball, you know, limit the sharp contact, keep the ball on the ground as much as possible. Got to work on the control. He had seven walks in March, so, you know, got to work on that. But I still think he's the much better option in this game compared to Griffin Canning, who, you know, his last two games in spring training went a combined nine innings of six earned run baseball with nine base hits, a home run, uh, two hit by pitches, and three walks to go with it. His control was way off in those games, and I think the Orioles have the much better lineup and the better bullpen to go with it. So give me Baltimore in this one. I'm going to lay the one and a half runs on the run line. Next up, we see the Atlanta Braves taking on the Philadelphia Phillies. Max Fried and Aaron Nola are your projected starters. You know, Aaron Nola would probably be the first one to tell you that it wasn't his best season last year as a Philly with an ERA above 4.4. He did have over a strikeout per inning at 193 innings, 202 Ks, but you know the ERA was a little bit too steep for somebody that's considered a 1B in this rotation behind Zach Wheeler. And you know I will say, though, Nola quietly put together really good starts against this Atlanta Braves lineup, one of the best lineups in baseball. A lot of quality starts, including the postseason game against the Braves. He pitched really well against Atlanta, and to end spring training, he was in good form. Started spring, you know, he didn't pitch too well, but the, the final two starts for him, a combined 11 innings of work, he went uh, you know, four base hits, only one earned run. It was a home run and nine strikeouts, so he was in much better form to end spring. I think he pitches pretty well in this game. Max Fried was not in great form, especially in March in spring training. 12 innings of work. He had six walks given up, 16 base hits, so 22 total base runners. You give up a home run and only seven strikeouts to go with it. You're facing a Phillies lineup to, to end the season. was really strong against lefties. Good power numbers, OPS numbers. 
I'm going to go with the Philadelphia Phillies in this one on the money line. Next up, we see the Cleveland Guardians taking on the Oakland Athletics. We're going to see Tanner Bybee and J.P. Sears as the starters. To me, there's value with Oakland in this game, even though this was you know one of the worst teams in baseball last year, and they set up to be one of the worst teams in the league this year. I still think it's tough to go with the Guardians on the row when you're facing a lefty, J.P. Sears, who I think is the best starting pitcher in this rotation. And the Guardians are a team that we know has not hit lefties very well in the last couple of years. Now, they were able to get to Alex Wood, but I think it was more of Alex Wood struggling than anything else. And I think, you know, J.P. Sears got good strikeout stuff. He keeps the ball on the ground. I think he pitches well in this game. The question is, can the, guard, can the Athletics get to Tanner Bybee? I think they will for a few runs. I think Bybee's still a really good option for Cleveland. I don't think he's an ace-level starting pitcher. I still think he's going to give up his fair share of earned runs per game. And, you know, I think the Guardians' bullpen this year, especially a little bit overrated. They have some injuries early on this season, so I'm not too confident in this bullpen. I think because of that, this could be a close game late, and I'd want that plus money on my side. Give me the Oakland, Oakland Athletics in this one on the money line. Next up is the Kansas City Royals taking on the Minnesota Twins. We're going to see Joe Ryan and Seth Lugo as your starters. You know, I mentioned that the Royals last year really made a lot of sharp contact offensively. When you look at the numbers, exit velocity, you know, expected slugging, this team was actually above average in a lot of those statistics, even though they were a losing team and their offense wasn't the best on paper. And you're playing a starting pitcher in Joe Ryan here who has had issues giving up the long ball in his career. He's got good strikeout stuff, but the home runs have hurt him at times. And I think the Royals can get to him for one or two bombs in this game early on. And while the Twins' bullpen is really strong, it's also dealing with some injuries to start the season, including their best, you know, one of the best closing pitchers in baseball in Duran. So I think the Royals can score some runs here, but I really worry about Seth Lugo in this game. He was not very good in spring training. It, was, it concerns me holding a ticket with the Royals' win total over, as you really need a guy like Seth Lugo to be that clear number two or just at least a decent three or four in that rotation. He wasn't that in spring training, and this is a good Twins lineup. They should be able to get to him. I'm going to go with the over here at Kauffman Stadium, a good hitter-friendly ballpark uh, in the Twins-Royals game. Next up, we see the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on the Miami Marlins. We're going to see a Major League debut of Jared Jones on the mound for the Buccos and Ryan Weathers on the bump for Miami. Now, Jared Jones, he certainly earned this spot in the rotation. He was excellent. He's the number three prospect in the Pirates organization, a decent farm system, and he was outstanding in spring. He went 13 and two-thirds in March with uh, 13 strikeouts and no earned runs. And then in February, he was also dominant, two and two-thirds with two Ks, no earned runs. So didn't give up a single earned run in all of spring training. Gave up some unearned runs, but he was outstanding. And I think he pitches pretty well in this game. You're probably not going to go more than three, four, five innings at the most, but I think he pitches well. And on the other side, Ryan Weathers, while he had his moments in spring training and last year in the regular season, He's just far too inconsistent for me. The Pirates aren't a great team against lefties, but they were able to get to Lizardo for a couple of runs, and I, I think if they're able to limit the strikeouts in this game, they should be fine. I mean, Weathers' his final game of spring training gave up four earned runs and seven base hits with a homer and a walk against the Cardinals in four and a third innings. He's just far too inconsistent for me. When we've seen him in the major league level, we've seen some good. We've seen a lot of bad, though, and i got to go with the Pirates at this kind of price. I think they're the more valuable side, so give me the Pirates in this one on the money line. Next up, we see the Toronto Blue Jays taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. You say Kikuchi and Zach Littell are your projected starters. Zach Littell, I watched his outings in spring. He was really sharp for Tampa Bay, and there's no surprise to see him in the middle of the rotation for a team that's known for its pitching. You know, he was really sharp, and not somebody I usually back as he's not really known to be a, a strikeout guy, but he, he was missing a lot of bats in spring training, keeping the ball on the ground, no home runs given up. Only a few walks, and his control was there, and I think he pitches well in this game. I think he's a far better starting pitching option in this game. When you look at the form that Kikuchi was in in spring, it was not good at all. He honestly had one of the worst springs of any starting pitcher we've talked about so far, he, and especially in the month of March, where he went five and two-thirds, giving up 13 base hits, 14 earned runs. That's a 22.24 ERA in those two games. Five home runs, five walks. He had seven strikeouts. Kikuchi's going to miss some bats, but he's also given up a lot of sharp contact. The control's not there, and he's somebody that's notoriously a slow starter. We've seen him have some slow starts to regular seasons as well. He pitched okay against the Rays last year, but only had one quality start in, I think, four games against them. So he, you know, while the team won for him, it was more morally because of the, the bullpen and the lineup. But I don't think the lineup's going to back him up at least early on, and I think the Rays' bullpen, while not as strong this year as in other years, I think it's good enough at the, at the final scores. So I'm going to take the Tampa Bay Rays here on the money line. Next up, we see the Washington Nationals taking on the Cincinnati Reds. Patrick Corbin and Hunter Green are the projected starters. 
you know, Patrick Corbett has notably struggled the last couple of years, and it's been tough to back him. But even in spring training where he didn't have the sharpest ERA, I still see a lot of improvements in his game in spring. He was able to miss a lot more bats. His control was a little bit better, and he kept he only gave up one home run in five outings, which spanned around 16 innings of work. So I think Corbett's going to have a better year this year. How much better, we'll have to see. But even though this is a tough matchup at Great American Ballpark, I think on the other side, you got Hunter Green, who's a strikeout-dependent starting pitcher. He misses a lot of bats, but he's facing a Nationals team that last year had a pretty low strikeout rate. And, you know, this is a team, especially in the second half of the season, really low strikeout rate. I think they'll be able to put the ball in play against Hunter Green. That's where he's had issues. We saw in spring training where he had really inconsistent results. He gave up at least one home run in three straight games to end spring training, including a game against the Angels where he gave up seven earned runs in four and a third innings of work. He was giving up a lot of walks as well. So I don't have a ton of faith in his game right now. And at this kind of price, I think the value lies solely with the Nationals. I'm going to go Washington here, plus the one and a half runs with a sprinkle on the money line in this game. Next up, we see the New York Yankees taking on the Houston Astros. Marcus Stroman and Hunter Brown on the mound in this one. Two starting pitchers that pitch well in spring training. Marcus Stroman's going to have to pitch well in the regular season. The Yankees really need him because with that Garrett Cole injury, it's going it's to be at least a month, but I don't think anybody would be surprised if it was more than a month because you know he's a really important piece. The Yankees don't want to rush that one. Stroman's going to have to be that you know really strong number two or number three in this case option in that rotation. He looked great in spring training, especially the final game. It's exactly what you want to see going into the regular season. Have your best outing that final spring start against the Pirates. Six innings of four hit, no run baseball, had five strikeouts to go with it. He's a guy that doesn't really miss a ton of bats. He's more of a pitch to contact guy that keeps the ball on the ground, but he had nine strikeouts across the last 10 and a third in spring. So I think he pitches well here. It's a tough matchup. This is a really good Astros lineup from top to bottom, but it's also a really good Yankees lineup from top to bottom. When you add in guys like Verdugo and Soto, it makes an already tough lineup to face with guys like Judge and Stan Healthy even tougher. So Really, this should be a great game. These are two of the better teams in the American League on paper. I'm going to give the edge to the Yankees in this one, though. I think Stroman is the better starting pitching option. I just think the Yankees are the better team here. I'm going to go with New York, especially at the price we're getting. I'm going to take them on the money line. Next up, we see the Chicago Cubs taking on the Texas Rangers. This one's going to be between Kyle Hendricks and Cody Bradford as the starters. You know, Kyle Hendricks is a pitch-to-contact guy, but in spring training, he really struggled to get those outs, especially the final two starts where he went eight innings combined, giving up 14 base hits. If you're giving up that many hits as a pitch-to-contact guy, you're usually in trouble. He up six earned runs along the way, and this is a very good Rangers lineup that will make you pay, especially when they're playing at Globe Life Field. I think the Rangers have a big day offensively. I think the Cubs chip in a few runs as well. Cody Bradford wasn't the sharpest. I think the Cubs' offense is underrated this season. While this, you know, the first game of the series had a slow start offensively, and then the, the game went, you know, picked up offensively as the game went on. I think this one we see runs early and often from both teams. Give me the over in Cubs Rangers. Next up, we see the San Francisco Giants taking on the San Diego Padres. We've got Jordan Hicks making his Giants debut. Dylan Cease making his Padres debut. This should be a fun one in the NL West. And, you know, Dylan Cease, his game really concerned me last year. He had a 4.58 ERA, pretty steep 1.42 whip. Not terrible numbers, but for somebody that's considered an ace and one of the better pitchers at that time in the American League, you know, you, you got to have better numbers than that. And I do think even though his strikeouts were still there at the moment, I, I worry that his strikeout numbers are going to start to drift a little bit this season because – you know, his put-away pitches just aren't as sharp as they once were, especially his fastball. You know, I do think it's a lot more hittable, you know, these days. And we saw in spring training give up a couple of home runs and eight and a third innings of work. The strikeouts were still there, but, you know, the base runners, I think I think the hits and, and, and home runs are going to really hurt him this year. And a team like San Francisco, a team I think is much improved offensively, I think they'll be able to get to him for a few runs early on, and I think it could be a, a, a short outing for Dylan Cease. And you know, Jordan Hicks, I don't expect him to go d deep in this game either. As he's mostly been featured as a reliever in his time in the major leagues, but he pitched really well in spring training. He's got great strikeout stuff, wicked strikeout stuff. In 15 and a third innings in March, he had 24 Ks in spring for the Giants, including in five innings his final game against the A's. Five innings of no hit, no earned run baseball, only one walk with 10 strikeouts. Hicks is in great form. I think he pitches well in this game. I think the Giants grab the W on the road. So give me San Francisco on the money line. Next up, we see the Colorado Rockies taking on the Arizona Diamondbacks. We're going to see Austin Gomber and Tommy Henry as the starters. This is a really tough game for me because I don't have a lot of faith in either of these starting pitching options. 
I'm going to side with the Arizona Diamondbacks on the run line here because I think they have the much better lineup and bullpen to go with it. You know, Tommy Henry was not great in spring. He, you know, he's inconsistent. He ended spring training in good form. So that's why I'll probably also lean with the Diamondbacks here as he had nine and a third innings of work. His final two starts, no earned run baseball. But the two previous starts of that one gave up a combined 16 base hits, 10 earned runs, and three home runs. So he's been all over the place. Same thing with Austin Gomber. He had a couple of nice outings in spring. He also had a game against the Mariners where he had two and a third innings of 10 hit baseball eight earned runs and a home run. So no, I can't have faith in either of these starting pitching options. But like I said, I think Arizona is the better team and I think they'll win this game in the end. We saw their offense explode in the first game of the season of the series. So I wouldn't be surprised if he get to Gomber early on and maybe Tommy Henry continues that strong for me at the end of spring. So getting the Diamondbacks here laying the one and a half runs, I guess I'd lean towards the over as well. Next up, it's the St. Louis Cardinals taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. Lance Lynn for St. Louis and Yoshinobu Yamamoto for Los Angeles. Yamamoto was not great in spring. He was not good at all in that first start with L.A. against the Padres in South Korea. It was one inning of five earned run baseball for the Dodgers, for Yamamoto in that game. And you know, I do worry about him in this spot. We just haven't seen him put together any kind of consistency to his game. So it's tough to back him at this kind of price. But Lance Lynn also not really as somebody I want to back at Dodger Stadium with you know how well the Dodgers have been offensively and uh, how much he struggled towards the end of spring training. Seven and two-thirds innings of 10-hit baseball, uh, eight earned runs and a home run. He's going to be able to miss some bats, but I think the Dodgers get to him still for a few runs. I'm going to go with the over here in St. Louis, Los Angeles. And the final game we're going to see for the Saturday card in Major League Baseball, the Boston Red Sox and the Seattle Mariners. Cutter Crawford and Logan Gilbert are your starters. I think we see the opposite to that last game in this one. I'm going to take the under here at a pitcher-friendly ballpark with two starting pitchers that I trust. You know, Logan Gilbert has to watch the sharp contact and the home run ball. He gave up a few home runs in spring. The home run ball hurt him in 2023 at times. However, I still think he's got great strikeout stuff. He's pitching, like I said, at a pitcher-friendly ballpark, a forgiving ballpark for starting pitchers. And Cutter Crawford on the other side also pitched really well in spring training. I look for his game to really improve this year. You know, he was solid in 2023. He had some you know, really good outings and 129 innings of work at 135 strikeouts over a strikeout per inning and a 4.04 ERA, not too shabby. I think he pitches well enough to keep this game under the total, giving the under in Boston, Seattle. And that's it. Those are the games for Saturday in baseball. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and put your baseball picks in the comments section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Ronelli. Good luck.